Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Hello, Dick Enberg here, and I'm mighty excited to announce the start of my new show, Sound of Success, right here on Podcast One. For 60 years, I've rubbed shoulders with sports greatness, from athletes in the world of football, baseball, college, and professional basketball, golf, tennis, the Olympics, and so much more. Join me as I explore in-depth stories from the greatest figures in the world of sport, and I'll share a few of my own. Download new episodes of Sound of Success every Thursday on the Podcast One app, Apple Podcasts, and Podcast podcast1.com Oh my Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but get on mandate. Get it on and welcome to the show. CarCast. I'm Adam Carroll. That's Matt, the moderator, DeAndre. Hello. Over there. Lots of car stuff going on yeah. in our world. We'll bring in the guys from uh, Turbonetics. That'll be Brian Renier and uh, Reggie Wynn. And we'll talk to them about uh, turbocharging. I love turbocharging. I know you do. I I've always loved it. I've always loved it. <laughs> it's my wiring. Yeah. You know, I've always loved. I, I and now I. Re- you're on like the free horsepower thing. You know, like versus crank driven horsepower. I am. I'm, you know? I'm, I, 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 last night, I was at home. Yeah. I was dreaming uh, about turbos. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I made myself uh, a little cocktail and I was watching uh, some uh, basic cable and uh, I put a little ice in my glass. And one piece of ice popped out, as it's uh, apt to do when you're trying to grab a handful of ice, and it fell on the floor. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I don't want to eat this ice. I don't want to put it in my glass because okay. a lot, a lot of fill hair. Yeah, fill sheds and lays everywhere around the house. So if something that falls on the kitchen floor and scoots along the floor, it's bound to suck up a piece of dog hair. But then I thought to myself, it took some energy to make this ice. <laughs> yeah, it took some uh, it took some material and it took some energy. What am I going to do? Just throw it in the drain? I t- <laughs> I took the piece of ice, I walked outside, yeah. and I threw it at the base of a tree. Nice. And I yelled, grow. Grow. <laughs> grow, you bastard, grow. <laughs> and the next day I woke up, the tree was dead because the ice killed the root. No. Because <laughs> Phil I peed all over the floor. I don't like. <laughs> yellow ice. I don't like waste. <laughs> yeah. now, everyone can go, well, you're just cheap. Boy, if I were cheap. <laughs> if I were cheap. <laughs> If I were cheap, I would have killed everyone in my family a thousand times. <laughs> they do the most insane things with waste. money ever. <laughs> just, just human waste and actual human waste. Uh, just, the, I, just the notion of $2,500 for lawn chairs is already, yeah. I would have thrown myself off a cliff. Would I wouldn't have them. killed them. I would have killed. I would throw myself into right. a windmill. But they would have been mulch if you did kill them. You can't just throw them away. I would not. I, yeah, I would mulch. Yeah, I would put them in the mulcher. <laughs> no, I would let. I would let them go on and find out what life without me was like. But I would throw myself into. I dive into a windmill. Yeah. If I was cheap, right? Because I waste money on tons of stuff. Actually, my family wastes money on tons of stuff, and so do I. It's not that. It's it's the energy. You're right. I don't like the waste of the energy. Yeah. See Good. what I'm saying? Good, because we need to have a conversation about solar panels okay. on the buildings. I need to get them back, and that's why. <laughs> that's why I like turbos. Yeah, because it's when I think about those nine thirty fives making, you know, seven hundred horsepower plus off a three liter, maybe a three point two. I love that story. How many new cars today are running like two liter turbos as their everyday fuel efficient motor? Yeah, you know. And I, I got, I got to say, I don't like to, uh, I don't, uh, I don't like to talk about myself. <laughs> but I'm going to take this opportunity. I didn't mean to laugh out loud. It's sorry. <laughs> I bought, I bought a first generation Mini S. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Mini S. Oh, it's supercharged. And I was like, why is it supercharged? It's a little 1600, maybe 1800 displacement motor. I think it's like a 1600 four cylinder. Like, why has it got a supercharger on? It's like, oh, that's, that's what they came with. That's what, they, that's what they did, you know? And I'm like, it seems stupid to put a supercharger on such a small 
little displacement engine. And it doesn't say sporty to me, like the four banger with the supercharger. Where's okay. the turbo? And I think the next S Gen that came out had a turbo on it. It did, but the supercharger was like a little twin screw supercharger and that design is very good for producing very low end torque. Oh, I mean, that's why they do it, but they still, somebody. Like Jag, all, all the Jaguar cars still have. Somebody heard me much. complaining and switched to turbos. Yeah. Not the following year, but the following. Well, they've already committed to the turbo, to, to the supercharger for a few years. <laughs> a few years, yeah. right. But the following gen that came out of the S. Whatever the R&D meeting, big picture of you in that meeting, big picture of the turbo. Me disappointed. <laughs> disappointed. Me going, give them the look with the shrugged shoulder. What with the, the fuck? Sur- What's going on? Supercharger shrug. Yeah. 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 I get it. But there's, I, I, you know, like, like still Jaguars having a lot of success with their superchargers. They're getting into some of the turbocharger stuff. Oh, it all, everything works now. I just don't like the idea of the crank turning the device. Yeah. That's just me. I just happen to like the idea of the exhaust spinning the thing. And that's, uh, that's just me. Yep. All right. And, uh, I I think, I think Reggie and Brian will agree. (laughs) I love the sound of that uh, Nissan V6 with the big turbo on it that just kicks in once it really kicks in. That thing is great sounding. Hmm? I went back and watched some of the, because we were talking about the, we can talk about this, but we were talking about the Steve Millen car, and I went back to some of the YouTube videos. Oh, man, I I watched it, too. And there was like a YouTube video of Steve Millen at one of his open house events from a few years ago when he's got his race car with the turbo on it, his Z with the turbo, and he's on the dyno. Like yep. the portable dyno outside, and you, it's just all turbo spool. It just and it sounds like a rocket ship going off. It's awesome. Yeah, it sounds awesome. The only thing that's bad about turbos, they don't know where to put the exhaust. <laughs> yeah. They put it in front of the front door, and it always looks on weird. Race cars, yeah, yeah, on yeah. E- uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, on race on race cars. It, yeah, it the cool thing, the one cool thing. Uh, actually, the Nissans are, are back a little bit. But the cool thing is when the exhaust comes out in front of the front door, it always looks a little weird. It does. But there's also, like, in, in the turbo drag racing world, like, uh, there's, like, a bunch of guys running five-liter Mustangs, Fox Body Mustangs with the turbo. And they have the – you see, the, we have a turbo here in the studio. There's the inlet right on the front. Mm-hmm. They mount the turbo right on the grill. So it's just like bodywork with a hole for the inlet. Right. And then the exhaust is just a tube that goes to the like the corner of the front bumper, like below the headlights kind of area. Right. So it's just a like in front of the Too front. Too weird wheel. for me. Yeah. Plus I lost a bird that way. <laughs> Do you remember um Yellowfin? My uh, parakeet? No? No. Never talked about him? Well, you know, the reason I don't is because he got sucked into the inlet of one of those Fox Body Mustangs with the five liter <laughs> turbo. <laughs> oh, God, I hope you have go for it. Couldn't go you have better taste in cars so I wouldn't have to constantly talk about these things? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. I don't even like them. I just want to make you talk about them. <laughs> There's one in my neighborhood. I see it every, every day. day. Every day. Every day. And it's the turquoise one. The one, you know. Oh, your favorite. It's Max not the pa- Teal Cobra, it's, it's a turquoise L- LX. Max Pat, you know when we go on road trips and every single time I see like an 80s Ford F-150 or a Mustang from the late 80s that's in that weird turquoise color, I ask why. And then you yeah. cringe and get sad. I go, why? <laughs> why? Me a beer. What race car is that color? <laughs> what? It's a truck. <laughs> they Remember, they had the turquoise F-150 as well. Ugh. All right. Let me see if I can uh, get right. my appetite back. With Fresh and Lean, man. You want to perform your best physically, mentally. We got to give our bodies proper fuel. Fresh and Lean is a healthy meal delivery service established in 2010, making meals to order from scratch with organic ingredients. So the meals are packaged in vacuum sealed trays, delivered in a refrigerated box anywhere in the U.S. No prep. That's the thing. A lot of other services out there they're fine but it's 40 minutes of prep yeah if you i got like that. this idea this not for you i mean this is for you the 40 <laughs> minutes prep not for you your bachelor man yeah yep they deliver anywhere in the u.s no prep shopping cooking or cleanup how about that for you man take meals anywhere in a freezable lunch bag for 15 percent off meal plans check it out fresh and lean.com I think they have deals for all different appetites and diets and all this stuff, but it's good stuff. It's good for you. 
Feed your body. You know, we talk about fuel. You got to put good fuel in the car. Oh, yeah. or the car doesn't run right. Your body's the same way. Got to put in the good fuel. Freshandlean.com forward slash carcast. Use the promo code carcast. Get 15% off meal plans and uh, check it out. 15% off. But freshandlean.com slash carcast. All right. Uh, so what are you, uh, Matt, what are you working on? Oh man, still working on the on the Mustang, but it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw you this weekend. I came in and we finished plumbing up fuel lines, working on front suspension, and we're gonna have that on the ground rolling again soon. The nine thirty five is uh, on its way yep. to um, New York. It's going to be displayed with Newman's watch. Uh, you guys will be able to see it. Is it is it Rich? Uh, Phillips. Phillips, sorry. So it's Phillips Auction. They have an office and a gallery in Manhattan, right? It's like 450 something other is the, is the address. I'm sure Chris can find it. I'm it's told. It's right in the middle of Manhattan. Like, you can't miss it. Whenever I'm in Manhattan and, like, walking yeah. all through the 57 and the and Park Avenue and all that's right in there. So I'm told that it's going to be on display from October 18th until the auction on the 26th. Mm-hmm. Naturally, we're not we're not going to be able to make it out there. But right. if there's anybody, any CarCast fans that are in that area, snap a photo. Go in there. See the car. Send us photos. Tweet us photos or email us photos because we can't, we can't go there to get the photos. And I'd love to see it. Like, is the watch going to be on display or what, how are they going to do it? And they said they kind of reconfigured the gallery or built a wall or moved a wall or something. So I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out. Right. And, uh, you know. We need you guys to go find some photos for us. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I'm putting together a bunch of cars. Our next stop will probably be SEMA. Yeah, right. We'll be we'll be out there. You were at an event last weekend. I did. My car, my Z car, was there. Yeah, it was a it was a great event down in Irvine at GT Technic. Uh, they had the open house event, and uh, Fabrice he was here. Uh, a couple months ago, talking about uh, modifying Porsches and doing work on cars, and he's got his race team going on, and uh, he had a cool open house. And um, by the way, cool mix of cars. I mean, there's just tons of Porsches, BMWs. I saw two NSXs, which I like a lot, and uh, your car was sort of center stage in their garage, and was awesome. It was just surrounded by people. Look great. There's a Carrera GT. There's your car there in the middle. We love uh, we love an NSX. Uh, I love it when uh, dudes go. I remember this car. I so I, I walked in. These guys were very nice. Car, yeah. They had the car there on display, and then I I walked in. And I was like, "This is a this is a show for all racing guys." Like there's a good, they got race teams and hopped up, you know, cars. I was like, "Well, let's take the hood off. That's the good stuff." Yeah, <laughs> you know. And normally you just show it with the hood on, but you know, because the styling's great, but. We had to pop the hood off. You can see every little nut and bolt in there still got the paint pen mark on it. Everything's torqued down, and mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I can't wait to get that thing on the tracks at some point. Me too. All right. Uh, do we got a question, or do we want to round up our our guests? Oh, we can we can round them up in a sec. I just I do want to address the uh, the bet that we talked about last week. We put it yeah. up on Facebook about that weld in uh, in the frame of the three hundred ZX. So, so what's the consensus, though? People chime in. It's like 50-50. Please don't answer <laughs> if I'm trying to set the table here. Oh, I, did, I didn't realize. Well, when I go, oh, that's your chance I'll, I'll, to stop that. I thought somebody mentioned Fox body. Yeah. Somebody I mentioned know, yeah. Which, when do you Teal have a full Fox head Fox. of steam? You get a full <laughs> head of shrimp. You don't get a full head of steam. <laughs> steam I was, shrimp. I was going. All right. Just <laughs> quiet, everyone, because I, I, right. there's a way to do podcasting. It's called teasing things. You know, first, you have to set the table. It's a 94Z car. It's a yeah. tube frame car. It's uh, it won Sebring. That, we don't know a ton about the car. I called Johnny O'Connell, one of the drivers, along with John Morton, along with aforementioned Steve Millen. Yeah. They drove the car in the 95, it's 94, 95, I can't remember. And um, it won Sebring. That much, it won its class at Sebring. That much I know. And it won a few other races. Then there was also a pretty horrific crash with Steve Millen in the car and Johnny O'Connell hitting teammates, hitting each other. We know that. There's also a pretty horrific tr- crash over at Road Atlanta. And we think this is the car that Millen was in at Road Atlanta. 
when he got in a terrific crash because he said when he saw the car, this car almost killed me. Yeah. And then when we started taking the car apart, the car's up on stands. We're just pulling off the body work and taking pieces off and cleaning things up and doing the brakes and stuff like that. We saw a seam, a seam that was the A pillar for the – so let's put it to you this way. You're sitting in the driver's seat of your car, mm-hmm. and you're in a roll cage, and if you take your hand, your left hand, and put it forward and grab something, that'll be the pillar that's coming from the fender up to the roof to create the, right. the cage. One of the main uh, tubes in this chromoly cage. And there's a seam weld about six, eight inches from the bottom. It's seamed, and it's sleeved. Because there's a, a couple little, Sean called it okay. a, what, a bung weld or something like that. But you can see there's a seam where it's welded all the way around. Okay. And then you can also see two little drop welds in about an inch from the oh, seam. Oh, I got you, yeah. And that's where it was sleeved. So somebody sleeved it. Now, sleeving doesn't make anyone's argument. That might, that's, Sean's argument was this car was cut up. And fixed. Tom's argument was they ran out of chromarty, chromoly <laughs> and they needed to extend it by six inches, which makes no sense to me because okay. he would say, like, Tom would say, well, they probably just ran out of it. And I was like, I look at Sean and Sean would never do that because Sean's a pro and this car was built by super high grade, yeah. super high end professionals. Now, I talked to Johnny O'Connell, and he gave me the name of the guy who did all the welding. And he was like, that guy was an artist, and he, w- he would know. I can't imagine a scenario where you'd run out of the material, but I don't know. People are split. I'm yeah. not sure why, why they're split. And then we also don't know if this car was the car from the accident right. or not. And they don't have serial numbers on them. And... I can't find any other places where it seemed to be put back together. Right. But Johnny said he was cut out of that car. Yes. And Tom said he went and like tried to watch the YouTube videos, and he said cutting them out of that car or whichever car he watched some video was far more intense than that fix, right? He was saying yes. like it was like Jaws of Life and a whole thing going on. Right. 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 So he doesn't believe it's the same car. All right. All right. So what's the split? Where are we? Oh, it, it's about 50-50, maybe three more votes leading to repair. Mm. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But here are some of my favorite arguments that uh, – and uh, and uh, big thanks to the uh, followers on Facebook for, yeah. uh, for uh, making such a great community and everybody commenting. So Jason says, I only see one joint weld normally on repair where a section of tube is being replaced. There would be two. So what is the total length of the frame member, and is it done that way in both sides of the car? Could it be that they didn't have enough tubing long enough to make that member from one piece? Okay, so to answer part of that question is, is this seam that you're seeing in our photo is sort of like right in the middle of the tube, and then the tube goes up to the joint on the halo. So that's the other end, right? No, here's, there, he's asking a couple of questions. He wants to know, is the seam on the other side of the car as well? First off, right. no, Sherlock. It's not. Because no. if it was in the same place on the other pillar, we wouldn't be arguing about it so much. Yeah, and so, we probably would have mentioned that. <laughs> we would have mentioned that. So, so it's not, Sherlock I, Jason. I understand Sherlock <laughs> Jason needs to ask that. The second thing he's asking is, does the thing go up and bend and go across the halo and drop back down again? Like, is it so long that they didn't have, right. you know, stuff comes in, let's just say, 10-foot lengths. Well, maybe this is over 10 foot. That's kind of the question he's asking. Yeah. In which case, there would be that on the other side because you physically couldn't get a thing of chromoly tubing. To answer that question, no. No. It's not. It's no, it's no I mean, to good no question. To Look, if- But it's yes. He made three assertions. One, is there one on the other side, which yeah. would make the argument go away? No. One is, is the length so great that you would just have to add on to it? Whether it was you ran out of material or not, it's just too long a run. Answer is no to that. But his other assertion of if this thing was cut up, you'd see all kinds of places it was cut up, not just this one seam. That's yes. That's a that's a good assertion, and that's that does lead you toward the well. It'd be cut up more in here. Yeah. Okay. 
And then uh, Bill says, it's probably a repair, not wanting to rebend the lower section of the pipe. The two plug welds are from slipping a smaller pipe inside to line yeah, it up. Yeah, good. And uh, give it that. more rigidity, rigidity at the joint. Um, Jack uh, says he agrees. Plug welds in a smaller, um, into smaller pipe at joints where the tubing was cut for a placement. Um, nobody would burn plug welds into their virgin tubing for no reason. Mm. So he's saying repair. Yeah. yeah. T- Tony had an interesting thought. He says it was a repair at the time of the original build. Ah, but- see, now that's... That might be the deal breaker because I know we've been adding backstory to it. Tom says they ran out of tubing, but really the argument is, is it a repair or was it sort of intentional from day one? That's right. the Sean versus Tom argument. You right. can make all the funny backstories that you want, but... Yeah. yeah Dwayne, you know. Dwayne writes, uh, I don't know shit. Why are you asking me for, Ace Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my listener. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Why? So, I mean, like Tom's argument could be like, hey, they finished the roll cage, and then when they went to go put something else in, a dash or something, there was no way they could get it in, and they had a cut and fix. But he's saying it's not from a crash. That's Tom's argument. Now, and does, Sean's argument is it's repair from a crash. Does this affect uh, – what does this affect if when we uh, find out? Like, $1,000. Okay, there's a thousand dollar bet between well, I mean, Tom does, and Sean. Uh, I mean, with the car though, does it affect the value or the? No, because that's think? it is what it is. Okay. That's the way it is. I mean, th- these stories are valuable. Uh, these cars are valuable because of the stories, and right. this is the story. Yeah, you know. All right, you go get Reggie and Brian. I'll tell you about uh, Bluehost, man, top rated website provider, powering two million. Plus websites, best tool to build, host, and manage your personal or small business website. Freedom to design your site your way. Fully customizable templates and third-party app support. Simple enough for beginners and powerful enough for advanced users. True reliability, (laughs) 99.9. Reggie's on a walk, man. 99 uh, uptime, guaranteed, and auto updates. Maximum security, malware monitoring and protection, and automatic security, secure WordPress installs, plus 24-7 tech support. Save 50% when you sign up at bluehost.com slash carcast. That's 50%. You want to let them know you, you heard it here. Get yourself a great website, man. Bluehost.com slash CarCast. Let them know you heard it here. Reggie Wynn is here. Brian Rene, oh, Renier, sorry, okay. is uh, here as well, both from uh, Turbonetics. Good to see you guys. Good to Thanks. see you. Talking, uh, talking turbos, man. Um, turbo, so it's, 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 it's quite a renaissance for turbos, right? Like everybody, I guess for cafe purposes, are trying to – are throwing a turbo on a smaller yeah, displacement s- smaller engine. Smaller engine up the power with. And then turbos. also now that so we were talking about like one of one of uh, one of Matt's favorite cars is the and one of mine too is the uh, is the Jag Supercar two twenty yeah F whatever two twenty right and and back when it came out like later eighties early ninety like eighty nine yeah. or ninety or whatever it was like uh, it's got a V six with a turbo Blah. like nobody it was big everyone's like where's the V twelve where's the yeah. where's the pistons where's the displacement now the new Ford GTs got a turbo yeah with six cylinders and it's right. becoming nobody cares far more the, acceptable just right? what the power right good for you guys definitely the uh, you know these engines. Uh, smaller displacement, and yet they're making far more horsepower than you know the bigger engines that that they replaced. Yeah, yeah. well, especially when you go to some of the Detroit iron from the eighties and nineties, just huge displacement with almost no no horsepower. What do you guys do? I know you're going to have a booth over at uh, SEMA. It's booth uh, twenty four one twenty five, by the way. If you want to uh, go say hi. I always think in terms of with a lot of these cars, Ford's got a lot of stuff coming out. Everyone's got a lot of stuff coming out. I always, uh, I think people think in terms of a chip and turning up the boost and getting a bigger intercooler and stuff like that, more cooling. But I don't think they think about replacing the the turbo. What's the turbo have to do with it? All right, I'll take that one. Uh, so the the turbocharger, and you can see, you know, there's all different size turbos. Compressor wheels and turbine wheels are, are sized for the airflow requirement. So if you've got a car with a turbo on it and you, you tune it and you raise the boost, 
you're going to get some more power, but you're going to you're going to run out of the airflow capacity of that turbo at some point. So the manufacturer says uh, this is a two liter motor. It's we're going to get 230 horsepower out of it. Let's put a turbo that that's good for that, but let's not oversize the turbo because it's just more money and more weight for Correct. them, right? Yep. So they got one that goes up to that, and then you say, I'm going to get some new throttle bodies, I'm going to get some new cold air injection, I'm going to remap this and everything, but the turbo just can't stay up with it eventually, right? Right. You know, you, you exceed the, that flow capacity, so you start running out into a, a very inefficient uh, portion of what we call the compressor map. It, is there sort of a rule of thumb that most people that are buying our turbo cars, anything from like your 911 to your, you know, your Ford Focus, and you're saying, hey, it was stock. I can get maybe 20% more power out of this thing through, you know, turning up the boost or chips and exhaust and all that stuff. But beyond 20% more horsepower, I need to start looking at a turbo upgrade. Is there, is there sort of a rule for that? Uh, it really depends. But, yeah, that's probably a pretty good estimation. Okay. I will say that you, you don't right want to go too right big. On. No, <laughs> I didn't hear that. Go ahead, Reggie. <laughs> yeah, well, what I was going to say is you get a lot of guys that – and every day I'm on the phones talking to people about turbo sizing and, and that whole bit – and everyone wants to go big, go big. It's like the American thing, the Big Mac. You want the big, super size, everything. But when you go too big, you lose um, street manners with the with the vehicle. You get all lag, and all of a sudden, bam, the turbo kicks in, and right. and you're ripping tires off. But I guess bigger is not always better. I guess I'll say that. Well, you want the, you want the right size turbo for whatever your application is. Correct. I think that's. Yeah. I think that we can all agree on that. So. Everybody now is going with a turbo uh, that I can think of. I mean, you know, BMWs, V6, Fords, turbo, every, Ford. Pretty much every Porsche, every Ford, every BMW. I like, don't know. Everyone's wh- going in that direction. As far as the fleet goes, I mean, I feel like if you just took your average fleet, like whether it's Ford or BMW or anyone, and you just went back 10 years and you went, what percentage of our fleet is turbocharged? It'd be 12%. Or eight yeah. percent, or something. You know, be down there now. Yeah. We're we're nudging. We're getting toward like forty percent or something with a lot of these manufacturers. So, is it going to just be all turbo? Like, is there going to be an internal combustion engine that's not turbocharged? I mean, I know there is, but I mean, ten years from now, is that even going to make sense to have a non-turbo to engine? Uh, there'll be fewer and fewer. I mean, still the you know big V8s. Uh, you know, they're they're probably going to live on for a while yet. Um, but for the most part, and a lot of it's driven by, like you said, cafe and fuel economy. Um, there's that you know a strong trend to downsizing uh, smaller engines and, with turbos to make up that power. The Aston Martin DB11 we had here not too long ago is twelve cylinder turbos. Oh right, it's a right. smaller twelve. Right, I can't say for exactly, but I think they went from like six or six. Six liter down to five point two, but with turbos. Well, you know, my whole thing is, is it's like turbos. Um, I, I don't know. It, I look at it like uh, uh, I like at turbos is um, like kind of like I like like I think of like with Tabasco. It just makes everything better. You know, that's why Hillary Clinton carried it in her purse. You put a little <laughs> bit on some eggs; it's good. You put turbos are too heavy. You put a little <laughs> shot. Are too heavy. Put a little. Sh- she carries a turbo. Okay. <laughs> you just put a. You yeah. just put a little shot. Of everything it makes everything better. So even if you're Aston Martin and you're the king of the V12s, yeah. the turbos make it better. Turbos make it better. It still sounded great. What's the core business for you guys? There's a couple things. One is is Turbonetics and Precision Turbo. I believe are now combined. Right, one super company. Is is the core business OE or or is it in the aftermarket? Yeah, like, that, that's a really good question right there. So basically, what's what's what happened was back in November, our parent company Wabtech acquired Precision Turbo. So Precision and Turbonetics working together is almost like the Dodgers and Giants joining teams and playing the rest of um, MLB. I mean, we're like. Super the rival rivals. race is what we're saying. He doesn't no, know anything know. about I, sports. I got, I got it. These are teams <laughs> no, but, don't like I mean, each I know other. they're not the same team. <laughs> Use so. Hatfields and McCoys next time. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> but, yeah, so what's going to happen? Mac from... and PC. I get it. Mac and PC. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. There you go. <laughs> so at SEMA, we were both going to be in the same booth. Uh, we have a big 20 by 80 booth. Um, Precision Turbo is going to focus on on all of the aftermarket performance side of things, and Turbonetics is going to focus on the industrial, military, 
type of application. So you will see all those different flavors in the booth at SEMA. There's a dude named Gail Banks. I should introduce you guys. You guys should get a <laughs> kick out of this dude. He likes turbo. We, <laughs> we likes know Gail. What? <laughs> you know Gail? You know Gail. Oh, How is well, that you know, it's such a small world, Jeez. isn't it? It's a teeny miniature, itty bitty little world. <laughs> all right. There's a question up here, Jason, from uh, Connecticut. Hey, Jason. 37? Hey, Adam, how you doing? Good, man. Yep. You have a turbo-related question? Uh, a couple of them, actually. Uh, the first one is is the sort of in the retail market is the twin turbo setup, a thing of the past. Is everything twin scroll, single turbo? Um, and the other one is, uh, to Matt's point, uh, with everything, with these manufacturers going to 100% turbo, uh, I think Porsche just retired their last non-turbo engine. Uh, what is the reliability going to be? Now that you're seeing mainstream sort of stop and go traffic type cars with turbochargers in them, Tur- uh, Porsche retired their last non turbo engine. Everything is turbo, and yeah. it's very confusing because you can buy a 911 turbo with a turbo, and then you can buy a 911 <laughs> without a turbo. And, yeah, no. yeah. Wait, you go, can you buy a 911 without a turbo? But no. it's a turbo. Well, you can I, buy a 911 turbo. I think a GT3 or something is non turbo, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you're kidding. The back agrees. <laughs> you said you just. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all things Cayman and all the Panamera, like everything's turbo yeah, well, now. The four cylinder turbo now. Yeah. And uh, the Cayenne just they just got rid of the NA V6. Now it's all turbo and that line turbo. Too. Yeah. 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 All right. So it's interesting. Sense. Now I, I want to get your guys' uh, thoughts on the reliability, but turbos have been running on diesel engines for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles so i don't know if reliability is quite the concern but what about like with the wacky with i hate this feature that start stop feature that's on this car is at every stoplight it's on and off and on and off and on and off and how how does that play in Uh, i think that you know the manufacturers take all that into consideration as they're doing their development they you know they they typically do uh, a significant amount of development on that kind of thing so um, you know they've they've got it figured out with oil supply and and you know how the the car you know restarts and takes off. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about the reliability. You know what what I've always said. You know going back a number of years is that you know, if you take care of the turbo, the turbo is going to be the most reliable part on the engine. You know you want uh, um, you got to keep it cool and and you know. Keep the air filter on, that kind of thing. Um, so, again, you take care of it. You know, oil changes on schedule. You're going to be good. I have a turbo question I always ask, which is the one side is aluminum and one side is iron. Does the other side that's iron need to be iron? Because whenever you pick up a turbo, it's like, oh, man, it's one side is so heavy. <laughs> and I, I know it's probably a heat issue and a durability issue. But is there such a thing as a super expensive turbo that we'll never own that is on both sides aluminum or made something other than iron on the other side? So there are some that uh, – so there's different grades of iron. Yeah, And so you're right. Yes, you know, because of the exhaust gas going through the turbine, you know, it can be up to 1,800 or 2,000 degrees and on racing applications even higher. So it's very hot. So you've got to have the right material that it's going to put up with those temperatures – uh, there are some thin-walled stainless steel. So the one we've oh. got here in front of us is uh, is is cast iron, right? But a uh, thin wall stainless steel one. Yeah, interesting. So that, that that would be yeah. much lighter and still put up with the temperatures. And, and like you said, it's much more expensive. On the cool side, do you start to play around with composites? Do you do like iron on one side and carbon fiber on the other? We've been playing around with that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You've been, you've been hiding and looking in R&D every time. <laughs> I might have snooped around, peeked through some windows while I was there. Yeah, it, make, it makes sense that with everybody going to a turbo these days, that the turbo is going to evolve along with all the manufacturers, yeah. too, the turbo itself. And for 30 years, it's been aluminum one side and iron on the other, right? Or maybe maybe more. I'm trying to think if it was iron on iron crime at some point. It must right. have been early on. But it makes sense that the iron side, see, 
I wouldn't have thought, but that makes perfect sense. Go with a thin stainless. It'll be it'll be lighter, and uh, there you go. Does it have to be metal? Can there, is there a composite you can use, like a ceramic or something? Like what are those th- what are those panels that are on like the space shuttle that are made out of? You know, they get super super hot, but you can actually touch it. Like it'll be glowing hot, but you can still touch it because it doesn't conduct the heat through. And because I'm sure manufacturers have to be looking at how to reduce under under hood temperatures, right? That seemed like a big issue back in the day is melting oh, wires. And- still is, yeah. <laughs> um, there have been a few things that have been played with, with composites on the turbine side. Um, as of my, my knowledge and what we've done, um, we haven't found anything sufficiently durable. Yeah. How much more or just to efficient. put this NASA to bed? To yeah, it. that's the whole thing. You could do it. It's just no one's going to pay 80 grand for a turbo. <laughs> yeah. But what is the cost of a, a basic turbo versus the aforementioned stainless steel on the, on the exhaust side? Approximately. So you're looking at a T3, T4 turbo is going to run you about, let's call it 900 bucks. this journal bearing, this mm-hmm. basic turbo, versus what Brian's talking about. That's going to easily be like four or five grand. Right. But if you got the money, man, that's a that's a weight saver right there. I get there. like if you're building like a super race car or something, and, yeah. and that's kind of the thing. Well, and then- listen, if we live in a world where you see fat guys on composite mountain bikes that are like $27,000, <laughs> a fat guy on it, <laughs> eating a donut, going down the street, you yeah, know? Nice I mean, that's, bike, that's, that's, that's why we're number one. Yeah. I don't like, need I'm it. Sure, I like, want it. We, that's the thing. If, you know, if Koenigsegg and McLaren are building turbos, why not go with the good... Turbo, yeah. you know, or the Aston Martin we were talking about. Christopher, right? 38, Virginia. Hey, Ace, I'm just calling to talk to you about your new uh, Triumph. I wanted to congratulate you on it. That's the TR6. I had a funny conversation with uh, my kids yesterday when I was driving them to the park to uh, play a little football and volleyball with them. My uh, wife said to me, how many uh, Paul Newman race cars do you have again? And I said, uh, well, I, I bring it up a lot. So why don't you venture a guess? And she said, uh, five? And I said, uh, no, ten. Because when I got this last car, I said, now I have ten Paul Newman race cars. And then she said something kind of vague and confused about, like, how many championship cars are there? Like, you have five out of six or something like that? And I said, no, no, I have three out of four championships cars. He won four national championships. I have three of the cars. Now, it's okay. Then we got into the car, and I was driving my kids to the park, and I said, uh, I know no one around here knows anything about the reason why they're never going to have to work again, but it's because of these cars. <laughs> I'll be gone, but you won't have to work because of these cars. But I said to my kids, how many cars do you think Daddy has how many Newman race yeah. cars and Natalia? Just cars or Newman race? Cars? Newman, okay. Newman. We're all we're still we're only on Newman. And okay. uh, Natalia said uh, thirteen, and uh, my son said nine. I said, okay, son, you're close. It's ten. And then I said, now Natalia, twin, eleven year olds. I said, uh, how many championship cars does Daddy have? And she said six. And I said, all right. He only won four championships. He only won four championships, so it can't be six. Sonny, would you like to venture a guess? And he said, five. (laughs) And I said, now, he only won four championships, and you're guessing five? And he said, I'm going one under to play it safe. All right. Okay. (laughs) I said, but he only won four championships. Okay. He said, "She she guessed six. I go five, I can't lose. Yeah. <laughs> Gives up a little cushion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like his thinking. It was kind of an interesting, <laughs> it was a weird 11. Right rules. Interesting way for an 11 year old to think, right? Yeah. But he was, you can't argue, he's going price is right. You hey, know? He, he was right on the first round. That's right. You know, he picked nine out of 10 without going over. Yep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, TR6. Yes. Sorry. Hey, does it have the original TR6 engine, or is it something different? No, is it it's the same it's, straight six. It's the straight six 
with the sheet metal pressed valve cover that hurts my teeth when I look <laughs> at it. It's I the go, Fox Buddy Mustang of valve covers. I walk around. I'm going to paint that shit teal. I look at my beautiful straight <laughs> six Z cars with the nice big cast aluminum yeah. top with the, the the Datsun written in there and Nissan and the the not valve and the aluminum aluminum uh, oil 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 drain, or sorry, oil filler, oil cap. filler cap and everything. And I look at all that, and then I see that weird tin hat. <laughs> narrow, yeah. stamped, push rod. Blah. Yeah. Ugh. Bothers me. I gotta like, shut the hood. It's hurting me. <laughs> but the car makes, supposed to make good horsepower. Is that 2.5 yeah. or that something? That engine, you know, stock does about 126. Well, it does more than that now. Uh, in race? Well, yeah, now you'd be bored out, and I guess make it a race engine, take the mufflers off and everything, sure. <laughs> take those mufflers <laughs> off, it? man. <laughs> no, it, no cherry it'll, pops on it. it'll make... I, I cherry think, bombs or I think, I, yeah, <laughs> glass packs, Put the man. glass pack on there. <laughs> I think it'll make on a good day about 2.30 Yeah, on that thing. I'll tell you, man, I mean, I just sold a 1.6 or 1.8 Datsun. I was making dyno in a 2.26. No, no yeah. turbo. Sorry, guys. Uh, but yeah. that's, I mean, a 1.6 naturally aspirated, making that's, well over 200, that's that's healthy. Like, what people don't realize. But I don't these. think you'll get 227. Out of, like, I think that's as much, like, that was that was turned up to the wig. Like, that was a cool engine. They yeah, that's, but job. all the yeah. race engines are the same. You just yeah. turn them up. That thing was great. I mean, this, this thing will get to over 230 yeah i think done right yeah mm-hmm. well, we're taking the car apart <laughs> yeah taking it apart so and- christopher you want to know when we're taking it out yeah yeah when, you, when, when are we going to get to see it well here's the thing monterey runs they have two run groups a and b a's race is on saturday one in the morning qualifying in the morning race is in the afternoon depending on what group you're in b group their race is Sunday, and if you want to race in this car with this group, you're going off at like 3, 3.30 on Sunday. Yeah. We're drunk by then. Yes. <laughs> now, are you saying I should drive this car drunk? <laughs> I no. think you should do what you feel. Well, yeah. I'm saying, well, see, what we we're do... We're so bummed that Coronado's done, like, because yeah, that would have been it's perfect. it's a good car for Coronado. Yeah. What we do is Sunday, we go down to Pebble Beach, we hang out with the Rolls Royce yeah. guys and the Rock. <laughs> oh no, we didn't see a Rock. We saw uh, 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 Strahan. Strahan. Strahan was down there. We're hanging yeah. out with Strahan and the Rolls Royce booth, and we drink. Yes. And then yes, we do. At some point, <laughs> we go home. Yeah. And the problem is, is when the race is at the end of the day on Sunday, we can't go down to Pebble Beach and drink. Don't and even then go to Pebble. We got to like pack up the car. We got to pack the race. We got to get out of there by. Nighttime on Sunday. I got to work on Monday. It's just tough. Yeah, it's just tough. So if they could move that run group to Saturday, it cuts into the drinking schedule. Yeah, it cuts into the drinking schedule. Sorry, Christopher. Well, but, you know, check out the Kastner Cup too, because that's a triumph only racing thing, and that car has run at Kastner Cup a bunch of times. Where it is moves it? All around the country. I don't know. It, it was here at Summit, out in West Virginia, a couple years ago, and I saw that car race then. Yeah, um, it, it's a cool car, man. It, it triumphs. Is. It's a good club. You will be one of the youngest Triumph owners in the country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm 38. I am the by far the youngest active member in my club. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe there's like a Fontana race or something or Sonoma or something that could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah, we'll get it out to Fontana or Sonoma. There you go, Christopher. Yeah, Sonoma. I look forward to seeing Let's it. Let's do Sonoma hey. coming up. Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah. Okay. What was that, Christopher? Nope. Oh, thanks for taking my call. Hope yeah, you have man. A great day. Thank you. All right, let me tell you about the Zip Recruiter, man. It's tough to find talent out there. You need it for your business. Zip Recruiter. You can post your job to 100 plus job sites with one click. Then the powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job. Unlike other sites, Zip Recruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, it finds them. It's like uh, Liam Neeson with his daughter. Oh, yeah. He doesn't wait for the phone to ring. He goes to them, man. (laughs) Over 80% of jobs posted get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. No juggling emails or calls. Screen rate and manage candidates in one place uh, with their easy-to-use dashboard. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right. Post them for free. Sweet. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash car. ZipRecruiter, 
dot com slash car and try it for free at ziprecruiter dot com slash car. I like when you say you can post jobs for free. You look up into the into the engineering booth. What's going on? Are you hey. are you hinting at the guys? No, yeah, I'm looking no. up. I'm looking no. up. Come Sends on, up Kastner's Cup uh, this year was in Illinois. Uh, yeah. Last year was at Sonoma. So uh, I, think, I think it moves around. Yeah, you know, let me tell you guys uh, a little parable. I didn't like Sonoma. At all, it was too technical. I didn't have a good time there, but then I was forced to go there by uh, Jay Leno and uh, some other powers that be. Yeah, and I drove. I was able to get a good twenty five laps in or something over there a few months ago, and I and I began to enjoy myself. Yeah, just with the familiarity. So uh, instead of just announcing, ah, I'm no good on that track. I don't like that track. <laughs> yeah. Moving Maybe on. give it a shot. That's yeah. why I was a horrible Maybe student in shot. high school. But, I, don't, I don't do math. <laughs> yeah, That's not for math. me. Not for me. Also, you didn't really like Willow Springs. Big track. And uh, it's not so bad. No, I didn't like Willow Springs. I mean, Spr- it's still brown. Like, I didn't like brown. Willow Springs. Hey, it's man, dirty. Reggie's sitting right here. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the scorched desert out there. Yeah. But And I didn't like the track because it's, I don't know, too fast or too something. I had not, had not had good experiences there. But I drove that C7R uh, yeah. Trans Am car there. Podium. Felt good about myself. So uh, you're right. Go, yeah. go take on those tracks. All right, so uh, sorry, you guys. Streets at SEMA, of Willow could be cool. Streets of Willow cool. could be for the CR6. The um, the uh, you guys do you have a twenty foot by eighty foot booth? Yeah, twenty by eighty. Do you know how long eighty feet is, <laughs> Matt? In terms of a booth. Yes, I've been to SEMA. Uh, that is a big. <laughs> that is. It's yeah. not quite Ford, but it's big, man. Yeah. Yeah, ginormous. Ginormous is what we call it. But yeah, we're really excited about this coming SEMA show. We're going to be debuting our brand new Focus RS drop-in replacement turbo. And when I say drop-in replacement, it's a true drop-in. You don't have to run any hokey flanges or any crazy adapters to put the turbo on. It literally goes into the stock location. And then you tune it? Say that again? And then you tune it or... Right. Yes. Yeah. We're not allowed to say that. We're in California. No. But yeah. <laughs> How long? So could could a could a mildly experienced sort of home rancher do that oneself, or we got to go to a shop for that? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. I mean, four bolts and four and bolts. F- 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 heat shields, and you're in. I got a quick question. Are we metric on uh, that car now? I don't that know. it's a world beater or something now? Yeah. Or is it, <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. The global they car. Are. The global uh, yeah, platform. So it's metric. So you drop that. You get you get out uh, uh, your ten and your twelve. There's no nines. <laughs> There's, ever no nines. There's no nines. There's <laughs> no nines. There's just tens and twelves, and you drop that baby in, and then we go from the horsepower, which is stock rated at what? Three something, three fifty, three fifty, right? Three forty five or three fifty yeah. for a Focus RS. Wow! Yeah, all wheel drive. Love loads. that beast, it's man. Awesome. That's a four cylinder. It's a four cylinder. Four cylinder. Two point three liter. Wow, that is healthy, man. And now we drop your product in, and we bump it up to the, the turbo is going to be capable of over six hundred horsepower. Wow. What? Once uh, you get a free flowing exhaust. Well, yeah. What a time we're we're living in. Um, what do you think for that car? Because, I mean, that just sounds like the most fun you can have. All-wheel drive, that kind of horsepower. You know, we love Tanner Faust and the Rally yeah, Cross Ken and all Block that kind of stuff. Has, Ken Block. It just, it just everywhere. sounds like a great time. What do you think that lower end is capable of before you have to start getting into the bottom end? Because that was always kind of the issue in the past when you're doing your car. How much can you do? intake heads and valves yeah. and how much can you do to the top end before we got to start digging into the bottom end because the bottom end it's going to cost a little more it's going to involve removing the engine so on and so forth yeah that's a good question so at, at 350 stock um i think you know people are pushing 400 425 on it now um probably to go much more than that yeah you gotta you gotta build that bottom end so, but that thing at over 400 horsepower just sounds like the greatest time right. ever. That car was awesome to drive. Ford lent this one a while ago. I couldn't imagine what it's like with an extra 75 or 100 horsepower. That thing's got to be awesome. I remember just getting a Subaru ST. STI. STI. There's too many cars. But I remember that thing came out that gave me that for a week to drive around with just all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive, I don't know why, but the most fun you'll have is going up a windy road, not 
across a windy road or down a windy yeah. road, but just going up because it claws. Like you feel it pulling and pushing at the same time. That thing with, I don't know, 240 horsepower or whatever back in the day. Yeah. 220 or something like that. That was a ton of fun. I couldn't imagine tacking on another 150 horsepower, 200 horsepower to that yeah. experience. Yeah. And the thing about lower ends is I would look at them sort of like when you look at a ladder and the ladder says it's an A-frame ladder and says it's rated for 300 pounds. <laughs> that doesn't mean a guy weighs 300 pounds picks up a donut, and the thing collapses. <laughs> if, it, if it's rated at 300, you can probably go to like four, maybe even 450, but don't go much. Right. And that doesn't mean right. 900. It just means a little. Yeah. You can go 25% yeah. past that, and yeah. it's sort of the same with cars, I'd uh, say. There's right? a lot of engines, a lot of stock engines, especially the ones in performance cars like our Camaros and Mustangs and stuff. I mean, those things off the showroom can handle probably twice the stock horsepower you know, or close to it, you know. I mean, you know, what's a what's a Mustang now? 430 horse or a Camaro's 426? Yeah, but you're not going I'm sure you can go something. 650. Yeah. yeah. You can. You could probably go 50%, 50 or, or 40% or something. If you want to play it safe, you know, 25, 30%, but you can't double it. You're going to need yeah, to get into that 50%. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, have a, we have a Camaro that we doubled it, and that thing is pretty sick. I don't ever want to ride in that thing again. It's <laughs> <laughs> out of control. But yeah, we make a bolt-on fifty-state legal Camaro um, turbo system for the fifth-gen Camaros. And out of the box, when we put put the kit on, it would make up to five hundred fifty horsepower easily. Yeah, and that's just you know on uh, using stock compression and everything. So the thing comes to you with what horsepower? Four and, the- and a quarter ish. Four yeah, and a quarter, quarter yeah. and you bolt this on, and it's compliant in all fifty states, and you're up over five fifty. Correct. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the way to go. Have you guys? Um, I'm guessing you know Steve Millen. I guess you know Stillen guys over there. They're over there strapping turbos on everything. You talked to him. We started the show by talking about his uh, his Z car, putting it up V six, putting it up on the dyno. I went to his place. He has an open house every year. Yeah. Puts the thing up on the dyno, but the thing's got so much horsepower, it's spinning out on top of the dyno. <laughs> you can hear it in the video, too. They there's keep no, trying to do there's it. There's no weight on the bottom. They up. can't tie it down enough you yeah. know, to get it to yeah. go. Yeah, we haven't talked to him yet, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be interested. In, you know, all the new Q50, Q60, and Infinities, those are all twin turbo from the factory. So a lot of guys are starting to want to upgrade the turbos on those. So. Yeah, because he was be doing supercharger marriage. kits for a long time, but now if there's turbos already on the car. Oh, so, oh he was doing superchargers. Yeah, he was doing oh, superchargers. That's, right. that's yeah. right. That's right. I screwed that up. He was taking yeah. all the Infinity stuff and bolting the supercharger the on cars, it. You know. But those were naturally aspirated cars. Right. Now they're coming from the factory with a turbo, which is good news for you guys because Millen's going to – when he wants to upgrade those cars, he's got to call you yeah. and not the supercharger. You better the, get over there. Not Edelbrock. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot yeah. easier. To, he's, he's like Coast to yeah. Mesa or something. He's yeah. going to get right over there. Uh, let me tell you guys about Geico. Everybody's got a to-do, a to-do list. You drop off the dry cleaning. You pick up some milk. Well, add saving hundreds of dollars to car insurance to that list. You don't have to drop off or pick up anything. Just go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. You need extra money in your pocket? That's the most rewarding to-do you can do today. Go to Geico.com. All right. Uh, let me give the guys a plug. Turbonetics, performance part manufacturers. You can go online at Turbonetics, just how it sounds, Inc. Dot com. You can also go out and see them at SEMA, and you can say hi to us at SEMA. We're going to be with... Uh, We're going to be with Optima Batteries, uh, first day of SEMA, Tuesday at 3.30 in the Optima Batteries booth. All right. So come on out. We'll be doing like a unveiling and a yeah, meet and, 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 and a live car and cast. A live yeah. car cast and uh, the whole gang will be out there. So you come see us uh, over there as well. Matt's going to be doing a shift and steer out there at the Magnaflow booth. Yeah, so right. go say hi to him. Over there, and uh, it's always good. You follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all that, and you find out where we are and what we're up to, and we'll always keep posts and keep out there. We love your car, guys, and we love it when we go out to an event and guys just come by, say hi, see the car. Yeah, yeah. SEMA's going to be fun. Chris and I will be out there pretty much all week. Oh, yeah. And you you can't miss the TurboNetics booth because it's 80 feet long. <laughs> Maybe next year uh, bring that Hino down there. Cause, yeah, uh, we got to bring like the Hino right down. In. Oh, yeah, we'll bring the Hino tra- <laughs> yeah. BRE transporter down there. you have to stay there. in it, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, oh. you think he was kidding? <laughs> All right. Also, uh, tonight, me in Minneapolis. Uh, nice. That is the 13th of October, the 14th of October. I'm at uh, Nashville. So tonight's Music Hall, Nashville's Polk Theater. I'm doing my one-man show, so come on out, say hi. We say hi after the show and all that good stuff. You can get everything you want, just go to AdamCarolla.com. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Reggie Wynn and Brian Renier saying, oh, and Matt, the moderator, DeAndre over there, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.